Hey, what's going on everybody? Bauer Brown here. Welcome to the next video in our tutorial series. In this video, we're going to be going over the terrain mesh paint mode. So if you look up here at the top of your screen at the toolbar, you can see this little blue box with a pencil looking thing sticking out of it. That is the terrain mesh paint mode, the icon for it anyhow. So if you go ahead and click that, that will get us in to the uh, terrain mesh paint mode. Okay, now a couple things about about this mode of terrain mesh paint. Um, you can place just about any object that you want to place with it. Um, houses, uh, basically any object. Anything in your scene graph can be placed through here. Now primarily it's used mostly for trees and that sort of thing. That's how I use it personally. I use it to place trees. Um, and I think that's how most people use it. Um, but like I said, you can place just about anything and I encourage you to experiment experiment with it play around with it um see what you know what objects are easier to place and what objects are not so easy to place and you'll eventually get comfortable using it and you'll find out over time what works best for you okay so just like any one of our other tools that we use here um there is an attribute for the mesh paint if you look over here on the right hand side of my screen um, in my attributes panel i do have a box or i have a, a listing for mesh painting Okay, so starting from the top, we have the distance max and the distance minimum. Okay, and what that is, is <clears throat> the amount, like when you when you lay down your trees, that's the maximum distance between, between those trees or the items, whatever you happen to be placing. So on my screen and my attributes, uh, I have the distance max set to 20. So 20 meters is going to be the maximum, the furthest distance that those trees will be apart. They will never be apart any further than 20 meters. Okay. And then for the minimum, that's the closest together that they will be. So they will never be the minimum distance of five meters. They will never be any closer than five meters. Okay. Uh, next on the list, the slope limit start and the slope limit end. Now, if you remember, uh, one of one of the past videos here we did um uh, i think texture paint mode might be a good one um but basically all of the modes have this but texture paint mode if you remember you can paint on surfaces um like say between zero or say between 40 and 75 degrees that that is basically the only surface that it will paint on right so same thing here so slope limit start and end so if we can set this for like 70 and, or say 40 and 75. So in between 40 degrees and 75 are the only surfaces that you can place an object on. So anything on flat ground, anything between 0 and 40, it, it will disregard. And anything above 70 to 90, it will disregard. It will only place items um, on that 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 range of what did i say 40 to 70 degrees so if you remember from one of the older videos same thing applies here okay now we have scale limit max and scale limit minimum that's the actual scale of the item right so if you have a tree just say for example is 10 meters tall and <clears throat> we put the scale limit max to i'm not even sure what it goes to um, probably two, I would think. Four, okay? So it's four times as big, roughly. I mean, I guess that would be it, right? Four times as big? Sound right to me. <clears throat> and in a scale limit minimum, you can make the object smaller, okay? As far as trees go, anyhow, I recommend keeping these settings at one and one. And the only reason for that is I've had maps in the past where I scaled the trees up to uh, probably no bigger than twice their size because they can get pretty ginormous if, if you go much bigger. But what I did is I scaled them up, and then I found out when I was playing the map that we had a lot of problems logging. Uh, the machines wouldn't wouldn't recognize the tree. Um, it just it created a lot of problems. You know, I couldn't cut them down properly. It, it was a nightmare. So I ended up having to resize all my trees to one and one um, to their normal size, and I've had no problems ever since then. Uh, so if maybe if there's areas that you know are not going to be logged or you're not, you know, they're, they're just in an area that you know for a fact that people aren't going to try and cut them down or log them, then go ahead and change the sizes and stuff like that. 
Uh, but especially if you have a logging map, just keep everything at one and one and you won't have any issues. Everything will be just ducky. Okay. Next on the list is a line to terrain. I think we've come across that in the past as well. Or did we? A line of terrain. But anyhow, <clears throat> a little bit a little bit later in this video, I will show you what a line to terrain does. And the random Y rotate is when you're setting an object, it'll set it exactly how it is, or you can randomly rotate it on its Y axis. I keep mine checked, and I recommend keeping that checked. Just because it, you know, it adds a little bit of randomness. If not, every single tree would be facing the same direction. They would look identical to each other, and you know, it just wouldn't look too natural. Uh, so I recommend keeping the random Y rotate on, and in this way, each tree that gets placed, you know, it gets rotated randomly on its Y axis. So basically, you're spinning it around in different directions, and you know, it gives a little bit of a more of a natural look, a little more of a, a random look to it. So we'll start getting into it here, and I'll show you some examples of how this tool works. Uh, like I said before, just by to use the Mesh Paint tool, you can select any object out of the scene graph. There is another way to do it, all right? What you can do is, if you want a little bit of variety, if you want to lay down more, more trees at one time, you have a couple options. Now, you could either, you know, make your brush size a lot bigger. Now, see, I only have one tree selected here. Okay, now just by increasing my brush size, there you go. You can see it laid down a whole bunch of trees at one time, right? Now, they're all the same type of tree. You know, it's all that American Elm Stage 3. Now, say you want a little bit of variety in there. What you could do is you can create a transform group and you can throw your individual trees into that, into that transform group. You know, you can put maybe a couple of uh, Stage 3 Elms, Stage 2. You can put a spruce tree. Uh, maybe a pine tree or two and it mixes it up and gives you a little bit of variety All right now What I'm going to warn you against about using now it works fine. So don't don't really take that warning as a, as a warning um, But what I'm going to tell you to watch out for is when you create that transform group Every every tree or every item that you put in there you have to zero it out Okay, so go through and your X is zero your Y is zero and your Z zero. That's what I mean by that. And do that for every object that you put into that transform group. If you do not, uh, this is what you end up getting. Okay, so right here, let's just pretend that this west border trees that I have selected, that's the transform group that I created. All right, now, so I'll click on the transform group, just like that, and boom, laid down all our trees in one shot. Pretty cool, right? But now what happens is when I go down to the ground level and I take a closer look, see how they're all floating up in the air and everything is all wonky? Well, that's the reason why, is because nothing was zeroed out. When you go through and you look at each one of the trees that are in here, they all have an XYZ value, and that's why it did that. So when you make your transform group, if that's the way that you're going to use it, um, just make sure that all the trees that you put in there are zeroed out that they have your the x y and z values are all zero and then that will keep you know what you see in there that'll keep that from happening where you know all the trees are floating up in the air and and everything else okay um so like i said you could either select individually and it doesn't matter there's no like uh I'm not sure what I'm going to say. There's no prerequisite to using it, right? So it could be a tree that's already exists somewhere in your scene graph, like this one here. It's not going to hurt it to, to highlight that tree, and then there you go, right? So it's not going to move that tree or do anything else with the tree that you have selected. It's just basically making a copy of that tree when you lay it down, all right? So moving forward... Uh, let's see, what else do I got for you? Uh, like I said, you can pick them individually or you can make a whole entire transform group and just lay down that transform group. Now, one thing that you're bound to run into somewhere along the line, and we'll go over this quickly just because you're bound to run over, run into it, I'm sorry. Uh, let's see, right here we have this lake or pond or whatever you call it, Okay. Now let's say I have this this blank strip here where there's nothing in it and I want to put some trees in there. You know, I think that looks pretty good. So we have our tree selected in the scene graph and I'm going to go ahead and, okay, I'm, I'm clicking. I promise you I'm clicking, but nothing is happening. 
All right, is it broken? What's going on here? Nope, not broken. So why is it not letting me do that? All right, okay, try over here. Nope, and it works, but it will not put, the, oh, so you put it there. All right, well, I'm gonna let you in on the secret. Some of you probably already know what the problem is. Um, it's the water, okay? So this water, when I select the water, you can see, see right up in here, how this water actually extends further than what you could visibly see. So the way that works is it will not let you paint over top of any other object, okay? And now whether that's uh, your water or, or anything else, it's just not gonna let you do it. Um, to give you an example, when some of the maps that I make, if I make a map that's based on a real life location, what I'll do is I make what I call a, uh, it, it's kind of like a photo layer, right? And what I'll do is I'll make a primitive and I'll go up here to create primitives and then I'll make a plane. So it's a photo plane is basically what I make. And I will take a photo of the area that I'm reproducing and I will put that onto a, onto a plane. I'll create a plane that's the size of my map and I'll bury that underneath the ground just so slightly. And whenever I need that as a reference, I pull it up above the ground and I'll show you how to do all this later. Um, I'll pull it up above the ground and then I'll, you know, I'll know where all the houses go, where the streets go. And then when I want to get back to work, I just put it back down below the ground and off I go. Well, for a while there, I couldn't get my, uh, my terrain mesh paint mode to work at all. Didn't know what the problem was. And that turned out to be it is that I had this photo plane buried just below the ground and it was goofing me all up. Um, so you'll run into it with, with any number of things, you know, if it's underneath the ground and you can't see it, uh, it, it's gonna goof you up. Even if it's above ground and you can see it, it's still gonna goof you up. So let's go back in the trees here and you can see where it's not gonna let you lay it on top of water. I laid it right next, uh, not water, the road. It, uh, laid it right next to it, but it will not put it on it. Will not lay it on top of a house. Or anything like that. So just keep in mind that you cannot lay an object on top of another object, right? Um, and I'll just just to give you another quick tip here uh, concerning the water. Okay, so now we know that we can't we can't lay over top of an object. So and to give you an example of that, let's let's just choose the water, right? So I pick the water plane, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to move that up out of the way. All right, the whole thing. Now, if you're going to do this, you want to take note of what your Y value is so you can put it back to the same spot um, just in case it's not zero. So if you have a Y value of uh, 156, you want to make sure that you're putting the water back at 156. If not, you know, you might have to goof with it for a little while before you get it back to your one. It. <clears throat> so we're going to raise that up out of the way. And then coming back here, right, and I'll show you what's going on. It still doesn't let... Oop, oh, oh, wait a minute. <laughs> My bad. I'm actually painting with water. Let's not do that. Let's paint with the trees. There you go. Okay, so it does let me paint with the trees. And that, that was just by moving the water up out of the way. Okay, so now I can go back to the water. I can put that back to its zero value where it was before. And that's how you got around that. Okay, that's how you figured out that there was something underneath there stopping me from painting which was the water all right now getting back into our attributes that we were going over earlier okay let's get back here let's get our tree going actually let's make ourselves a uh, bit of a hill here in the field so we'll select our uh, our terrain sculpt mode all right and let's get this speed up the process here a little bit we're going to turn up the opacity and we're going to turn up the value Let's make our brush size a little bit bigger. Give ourselves some room to work here. Okay, let's go a lot further than that. Let's go up really high. Let's do opacity and value. Okay, there we go. Now we're cooking with butter. Alrighty. And that's going to be my, uh, my mock mountain, we'll call it. That's going to be... And basically, that's not too different from how I would actually make a mountain if I was going to make one, right? Something like that. Okay, so now we go back to our uh, our mesh paint mode. 
Let's make our brush size a bit smaller again. Okay, now we highlighted the tree. And we're going to go back over to our attributes for the mesh paint. Uh, I passed it, didn't I? Of course I did. All right, so let's go back to the slope limit start and slope limit end. Now, this is where I'll give you the example. And like I said, what this is doing is letting you paint on a, on on only on a certain type of angle, right? So if you remember from our previous example and one of our other tutorial videos, uh, between 0 and 90, <clears throat> sorry, my voice is getting kind of wonky today. Between 0 and 90 lets you paint on, on anything. That's every surface, right? But we don't want to paint on every surface. We only want to do between, um, let's just pick two random numbers, okay? Let's pick between, okay, I lost my attributes again. There they are. They were there the whole time. We'll use 30 for the start and 75 for our end. Okay, so now when we go over to flat ground, it won't let us paint. But if we go over here, now there you go. It lets us paint only between 30 and 75 degrees is where it lets us paint. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of the trees that I just put there. And I'm going to click Align to Terrain. Let's try that again. Okay, now let's unclick it. And then we'll go back here and we'll lay another tree. Now, let's look at the ones that were not aligned the train. Uh, those trees stand straight up like you would kind of expect them to. You know, when things grow out of the ground, they grow straight up. When you have a line to terrain clicked, then you get this, where you get... Let's see if I can see it here. Oh, boy. Where you get the tree pointing straight out the side of the hill. <laughs> so, because it aligned it with the terrain. You know, if the terrain's on a really crazy slope, well, now so is your tree. Um, so you want to use that with a little bit of caution. Take care when you're using it, because because basically that's what could happen. Personally, I leave mine unchecked all the time, um, because, you know, I don't want my trees sticking straight out the side of a hill. All right. <clears throat> uh, let's see. Anything else? I don't think there is. Um, so to kind of to recap things, like I said, we... Uh, you can paint anything that you want to paint, you know, whatever, no matter what that object is, it's trees, it's houses, it's entire water planes, you can go ahead and paint with it. You can paint by an entire transform group. Just make sure you zero out all the objects that you're putting into that transform group, or you're going to have floating trees, and trees are getting placed where you don't want them. So make sure that everything is zeroed out before you put it in there. Okay? Um, you cannot paint over top of other objects. You know, pay you know, a special attention to what's in the area. If you're trying to paint and it's not letting you put that object down, chances are there's something there, maybe something underneath the ground that's stopping you. Um, and I think that may be everything. Yep, that is everything. Um, if I think of anything else, I'll make another video on it later down the road. But for now, I'm Brown, and I will see you on the next one.